So I did get to talk to that code enforcement uh, guy and I asked him, I said, man, I, everybody keeps telling me there's trails that I'm missing. And uh, he, he directed me over here and man, I'm missing my motorcycle. Like I'm waiting on the Hemlock uh, manual to see exactly how to change the oil. Like I said, there's conflicting information on YouTube. And uh, anyway, we found this, the Sunny Hill Restoration Area. And I, I, supposedly this road right here, I, I couldn't tell you the number of it, I forgot. I just got off of 314. And this may go back to 42, which uh, I do need gas in the, in the car here. And, uh, but you can kind of see what the hike is gonna look like. It's just a, just a, a road kind of going back into the forest. And uh, once again, I'm out here <laughs> all by myself. You know, it's uh, I love being out here in the country. It's just, it, what a beautiful day. Oh my God, this is just amazing. And uh, you know, we'll get going here in a minute. Uh, I've only got a, about four hours of sunlight left. And uh, so we'll probably go down that about an hour and a half, two hours and get way out in the forest. Uh, hopefully we'll see a bear or uh, he said there's a lot of deer back in here. You can see there's a sign back here. Maybe that's a map. And uh, we'll get that in just a minute. And uh, I was hoping to get an address, but no, it just says do not block gate. You know, that's for the horses to get in here. And uh, along this road, there's a horse, you know, boy, we're in horse country. You can see they can just kind of go right along here and, and go around and, you know, and come just go along the road here. Lots of, lots of, this is horse country, that's for sure. All right. So let's find out about the Sunny Hill Restoration Area. This old farm residence was built in the 1920s by George Elk, the first muck. I wonder what a muck farmer is. I, I, I'll have to look that one up in this area. The original farm covered about 900 acres and was called Starks Ferry Farm. After a succession of owners, this property was purchased by the St. John's Water Management in September 1988. Sunny Hill Farms contain nearly 4,000 acres along the historic Oklawaha River channel from County Road 42. Like I said, I told you that drive is going to get me over to 42 to Moss Bluff. That was where we were. Uh, restoration and renovation of the historic farmhouse was completed. Huh, I wonder where that is. In addition to the south track of 3,401 acres, uh, access for hiking biking is available at two parking areas. And let's look at the uh, the map here. So, well, there's a little camping area. That'd be cool. And uh, I'm just kind of looking at it. South Trek. Anyway, you can read the rest of the sign, but uh, we got to get going. Daylight is waning, and we're going that way. And there's there's the parking lot back there. Should be a good day. Boy, a beautiful day. Oh man, the temperature is just awesome. I just wish I could ride my uh, motorcycle. I got to, like I said, I got the manual on order and I got to figure out what the proper procedure is to change that oil before I drive it anymore. You know, I'm always on the lookout because I do want to do some rustic camping. Look at that. That would be a cool place to throw a tent up and spend a night or two maybe and just hike around here but we're getting uh we're getting way down in here this is good you know it's kind of a you can see the horse uh, shoes that come through here it's an easy hike just enjoying the day let's keep on going i thought this was a cool shot just looking at that tree with the I, man i don't know what that stuff's called that hangs off the tree but with the sun kind of glistening there isn't that cool looking I just, uh, all right. Anyway, we're, it looks like we are heading back into some oak trees and uh, should be it interesting. So here we got a camping symbol and I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a designated camping area, but the trail looks like it goes that way. And then also it goes this way. So I'm gonna continue on this way, you know, and, and just see what we see. So <laughs> getting a lot of turns, but I thought this was cool. I mean, it, uh, kind of a little waterway, I suppose. Uh, and if you spin around, it kind of goes this way. And well, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna make a left here, because uh, 
I want to see where it kind of looks more beautiful going this direction. Kind of more of what I'm seeing along the way. Pretty cool. But I wanted to swing over and get on the left here. Doesn't that look like uh, quicksand? Like if you got in there, <laughs> you might, you, you would need that rope to pull you out because I swear that looks just like quicksand. Needless to say, I'm not jumping in to find out. Kind of go and let's just look at where we've been. And we'll swing around and look at where we're going. And there's a bird. We got the birds. Kind of what I'm seeing along the way. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Who would have thought this hike was here? And this is what's on the left here. And we're just heading on in this direction. Really, an awesome hike. Who knew? So the trail's kind of moving on that way. But I thought this was unique. Because you've got this little, I guess, inlet to, to get you across the, the water here. And then it goes on this way. So let's go a ways back in here. This looks even more interesting than just continuing down that trail. Boy, I tell you, you could just spend days and days probably back here just hiking all this stuff. Now maybe I'm going to get, I'm thinking this might loop back. And I got plenty of time, so we'll, we'll just stay on this for a while and see if we get back to where that little camping signal was but uh, in fact i think i see a little little fire pit down here where people may have camped let's check that out so this is different so you can kind of see it's going that way there's the little fire pit that i was talking about but i think that's just somebody and i can see the red dot so this is another trail which i think is going to go back but i'm in no hurry to get back right now let's go the other way so this turned into a total horse trail here, and uh, I will go back the other way because I think I saw what might have been like a, a camping area for that camp thing. And, uh, and if nothing else, I can always go to the right if we get back too soon and got plenty of daylight left. But you can kind of see that it'd be tough hiking through that, especially when I don't have my hikers on. Just got tennis shoes because I was expecting an easy hike today. I just want to get around the corner here and see what we see. Yeah, you can see it's just kind of winding on through there. It's definitely hikeable, you know, but uh, let's go on back the other way. So kind of a very, very different look on this side of the, of the creek. And on a hot summer day, this would be a much better hike because of the shade. You can kind of see how the trees uh, hang over top of the road. I can't really call this a trail. <laughs> it's more like, obviously they, they drive, uh, the horse vehicles back in here and, and uh, bring everything in. I'm just surprised you're not seeing any at this time of the year. I mean, this is a, this is when you want to be out and about. Pretty sure this is just going to take me back to that fork and then we'll take the right hand side and go down there a little ways. Well, I was right. I did find the camping area. Isn't this cool? I mean, it's just bizarre. You're out here in the middle of nowhere. Nobody out here but me. And uh, I thought maybe we had potable water right here, but it says do not drink non-potable for human consumption. But it would be a great place to camp and do your dishes. You can see somebody left a little coffee mug there. And uh, you do have a fire pit. So actually, if you uh, loaded up a backpack with some firewood, you could hike it back in here and have a nice fire. Uh, this is donated by the Altoona trail riders so the very nice very nice setup and uh this is a, so it says it's a group camping area st john's river water management district tent camping only which uh that's all i do anyway but i'll just give you a quick look around boy this would be a great place to just come and spend a couple of days you know not too far from my house i mean hell I, I, I might come out here and spend a, a couple, three or four, you know, during the virus, what else are you supposed to do? You know, my wife goes, hey, you don't protect me. You're going to get the virus. Yeah, I'm going to get the virus out here hiking in the forest. <laughs> it's it's going to blow in off of them trees right there, you know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is kind of what I'm doing until I get the vaccine. And like I said, I'm in no, no hurry to get that vaccine. 
after my reaction to the anthrax vaccine during the war. So I uh, we'll, we'll, let's wait and see how everybody does with it before I take that jump. Anyway, looking down here, isn't that nice? And see, you know, this is this is what you can do during the during the virus here. You know, get out, do some hiking. Now I wouldn't recommend the Santos Trail anymore. That's uh, that's a that hidden secret is gone. So I would just soon come here from my hikes from now on rather than go to the Santa. And I see here in Chernobyl, the uh, by the river there, nobody's on any of these trails. For now, I mean, like I said, we got 800 people a day moving to Florida. But uh, anyway, I think, I'm pretty sure that's going to just loop right back. And I, I might just, uh, well, I'm going to go off to that right-hand side and go down there a little ways. And we'll see what, I, what we see. So this is the right fork. Uh, and I was right... That trail loop right back to where we started from, and uh, so we just go a ways. You know, kind of a different look, isn't that nice? So we'll go down here a ways, and then uh, I got to turn around at 16:30 and uh, head on back, so that it doesn't get too dark before I get to the car. So this is where things get bad for me. Look over there. Looks like there's two crosses, and I'm gonna try to get over there, but I'm running out of daylight. I just want to see what that is. All right. Just wanted to show you what it looks like now. Nice hike, very nice. Anyway, I hiked too long as usual. It's going to be a long hike back. But it looks like these are power lines. And what I want to see, a lot of times there's a trail underneath the power lines. And I know I have to go back that way to get back to the car rather than going all the way around the horn. So since I've hiked this far, let's just take a look. But it's gonna <laughs> it's, it's gonna be dark before I get back to the doggone car. And I swear, in my curiosity, I just just want to keep going sometimes. But uh, anyway, this is a beautiful day, and it'd be a nice hike back. I'm just hoping I can take a different route back. But uh, I guess we'll see. All right. But anyway, get a look around here. You can kind of see that's where we came from. And uh, beautiful hike. Nobody out here. You know, one thing I thought about, you can tell the motor vehicles have been back in here big time, probably horse trailers. So, and I haven't seen any signs that says no motor vehicles. And I could easily get my motorcycle through that gap in the gate. So what I'll probably do once I get the oil changed is come back here and ride these trails and just see, you know, see where they go, spend a day. That'd be a lot of fun. That's why I bought that thing. It's a that's why it's called an adventure bike. It means it can go off-road. And uh, I'm sure they wouldn't want me back here riding a motorcycle, but I don't think anybody's going to... It makes so little noise, I doubt anybody's going to catch me if you can. Well, I got my hopes up. <laughs> but, but they've been dashed at this point. Because you can see, I mean, I'm pretty sure that this is heading back to the... Uh, that could be... Hell, that could be the parking area right back there for all I, what I can see, but there's no way I can hike through this. So I got to go back around the long way. Who knows? Isn't it cool seeing these power lines out here in the middle of nowhere? So you got that going. I guess if I had a horse, I could ride that. But uh, just show you what the power lines look like. <clears throat> that's kind of going back this way, and that's what I was seeing. I'm glad I got up here. Like I said, we'll bring the auto the motorcycle out here next time and I ride a lot of this I, I mean, this goes for well it's 3,000 acres or whatever it was and uh, you could probably ride a long time just like you'd ride a horse you know I'd, I would make sure there's no horse trailers I don't want to spook any horses or anything I'll, be, I'll make sure I'm back here by myself when I do that but uh, all right, we got a long hike back so we're on our way back it's uh, war story time <laughs> Always got to get the selfie act. I think this is going to be kind of a pattern. I record a story and then think about what I, the next story I want to tell. So we're going back to the Mojave Desert. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we, uh, we pulled in to this area and I took my hygiene very, very seriously in the, uh, in the Marine Corps. Because you know what, it, a small scrape or a scratch or, uh, you know, even your teeth, you know, when you're out there for a month, and there's no, uh, you know, no, no alcohol, no shower. You know, those, 
those wounds can fester and, and turn uh, septic very quickly. Uh, even, you know, just a, just a simple scratch. I mean, you know, a lot of times, you know, we don't think about these things uh, in normal life. Um, it's just when you're out in the, in the field, you know, like when I'm backpacking and stuff, you got to be real careful about your hygiene. So at this particular uh, camping site, or bivouac, I guess I should say, and when, there are no camping sites in the desert. It's just wherever we pulled up, that's where we would just lay on the ground and sleep for the night. And uh, so I went off to, to um, I don't know, a good, good, good ways away and brushed my teeth and spit the, uh, spit the toothpaste out on the ground and uh, came back and laid down and uh, that, that, it got dark and uh, man, something, something was biting on me. I was like, oh my God, what the hell? So I, uh, you know, I kind of got up and, you know, I, I looked over at the track and like I said, you're not supposed to sleep on the vehicles, but uh, you know, I was, of course you're, you're half, it's almost like being drunk, you know, you're just like, oh man, I, I just want to sleep somewhere, and so I crawled up onto, I mean, literally, sleeping on metal, you know, the track uh, door, I just crawled up on that door and fell asleep, well, uh, and I wasn't the only one, there was two other guys there, and uh, so, along about the morning, <laughs> here, comes these, here comes these helicopters in, they're medevacking out a couple of guys, and what we had done is we had bedded down in, a, in an ant farm, and those desert ants, I, mean, I don't think there's any desert ants that don't bite and uh, aren't somewhat poisonous. And uh, so a couple of the guys had just gotten eaten alive by the ants that night. And uh, they had to medevac them out. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, they they were blaming me because they brushed my damn teeth. <laughs> Alice, you should have been further away. I said, come on, my toothpaste didn't attract a bunch of ants over here <clears throat> to chew on everybody. I mean, it's possible, but I, I don't think so. That's a good ways away. But uh, so that's just, you know, that's the stu stuff you run into in the desert. And, you know, nobody that I know of got bit by a scorpion. But, you know, you're just literally just laying on the ground. You know, you're not in a sleeping bag. You're not in a tent. You're not in a shelter half. You just pull up and just, you know, dig kind of, a, I would dig, always dig a hole. It can then so, so my body, you know, my butt would be down in that hole and and just sleep right there on top of the ground, and uh, that's that's the uh, that's what I call the ant story. <laughs> I never knew what happened to those guys that uh, got eaten like that, and uh, but that was quite a sight in the morning when you wake up and two helicopters are landing nearby to, and they're carrying a couple of people and you're wondering what the heck was going on. All right, that's uh, that's another 29 palm story. So, I guess I'm going to kind of get to a mix of stories at this point, because I'm racking my brain for any more great uh, Mojave Desert stories, and I'm not coming up with uh, any, but I did have one, you know, I've, like I said, I was a college student during all of this, and uh, I was at James Madison, and uh, we had a, you know, our, our contingent of Army ROTC, and uh, I don't know why I ended up hooking up with those guys, but you know, they knew I was a Marine, and of course, you know, like I said, there's no love lost between Army and Marines. They're like, hey, man, why don't you, why don't you come on out, Marine, and, you know, train with us. And uh, so I, stupid me, I agreed to it. And uh, But they were going to do some rappelling, and I love rappelling. Some rappelling's fun. And uh, I'm a pretty good rappeller, or I was back then anyway. And um, so we, we, we went out on this cliff face, and I mean, it was huge. I, I you know, it's probably, I'd... I don't know how many feet it was, 500 feet, 1,000 feet down this cliff. And uh, so they, they dared me. They said, yeah, yeah, we, we bet you can't make that, uh, that drop in two, in two bounds. Because that's what you do. You know, you, you go down a ways and you tighten that rope up and come back into the rock. And then you spring off the wall and you go down a ways and you come back into the rock. That's how repelling works. And uh, so... I said, yeah, okay, I'll take that damn challenge, you know, because I'm, I'm going to be the badass Marine, right? <laughs> Stupid. I was dumber than a bag of stones back then. So, you know, I, I got on the rock face, and I got down a little ways, and I said, okay, see you guys at the bottom. And I did, man. I sprang off that wall. I went way out, and I just, just unleashed that rope. And uh, so it's really basically a free fall at that point. And I went way down that rock face. And if the problem is, is that, uh, you know, when you do finally tighten up that rope to come back into the rock, you're coming in at 
well, a pretty doggone fast velocity. You know, it's not like just taking it in, in short leaps and bounds. No, I'm going to do it in two bounds. And uh, I bet I fell a couple hundred, you know, 200, 250 feet on that first bound. And uh, and so swinging back in, I mean, I came in like a, a, a hundred miles an hour and hit that rock. Luckily, I didn't didn't break anything. And if I had turned sideways, I imagine it would have injured me probably pretty bad. Uh, and certainly if I turned around on my head, it would have probably killed me, you know, <laughs> you know but, but I was, I came in on my feet and, uh, and I hit that rock and I think, man, how in the hell am I supposed to get from here? And I got stuck I about a little less than halfway to get to the bottom. And, uh, and that's another thing. You got to time it just right when you get to the bottom, you know, you don't want to hit the, <laughs> you don't want to hit the ground when you get to the bottom when you're doing something stupid like I am. And, uh, so I thrust again way out from that rock and uh, and then of course I, I let go free fall again and I, I hadn't gone more than three or four feet and there was a huge cave right there uh, just I mean just you know maybe 10 feet below where I had come back into the rock so if I had gone another 10 feet 15 feet when I came swinging back in I would have just just flown right up into that cave you know and you can imagine I mean just think think of it you would have I would have bounced around like a doll in there and uh, just 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 torn me all to pieces uh, just pure luck I mean and once again that guardian angel he always looks out for me <laughs> and that's you know when I got to the bottom uh, and by the way I did time it just perfectly and I got off that rope I didn't even mention the cave I just said see that's how a marine does it you know of course I'm going to act like I'm a badass you know it's stupid <laughs> I'm a stupid badass, but uh, yeah, and uh, I'll never, never forget that because I, in my mind, I thought, you know, Kirk, you got to have some sort of caution in your life, you know, some semblance of common sense. Yeah, I should never try to take that, that cliff face in two bounds, and I just got lucky that I didn't swing up into that cave, and that's why you take it in short hops because you don't know. I mean, it might be, you know, where the rock goes in, or you might hit the rock face at an angle you know so that's that's why you would never do what i just did and uh yeah, we'll get into some army stories next um that was that was back when still i was still in the marine corps like i said i was training with the rotc at the college all right enough of that Whew. well i'm making the turn which is good and uh that means i'll be back at the car well before dark i believe still got a ways to go for sure and uh, we'll move on to the next story. Now, this one, uh, let's just get you a look. There you go. So, so now we're, we're, we're making the turn, heading back on the main road here. We went right, we went left, we went around. And uh, so one of the things that, you know, I went in the Marine Corps for was to help pay for my college. And uh, they didn't give me much money back then. I mean, it was pretty decent. They gave me a 1000 a year uh, for a six-year enlistment. And... Uh, but, uh, you know, my last year, you know, I asked them, I said, well, look, you know, um, I, I don't really want to make that drive back and forth. And, you know, like I said back then, we had no money. Uh, those were the Clinton years. And uh, so, you know, basically all we did on the weekends, and I had to drive all the way back from Harrisonburg to Lynchburg, Virginia, every, uh, every month for, for my weekend drill. And, uh, and we just sit around, clean the rifles. You know, occasionally we went out and did something. There's a couple stories there. And uh, so I, I decided that, well, you know, we had a light infantry uh, army unit right right next to the college. And, uh, yeah, I didn't care. I mean, I mean, the thing I liked about those guys is they went out and did things, you know. So they would go up and do mountain warfare. Uh, um, you know, we, uh, we, we were, well, anyway, so let's just get back to, so I, I asked this, is there any problem with me switching branches and serving up my last year of enlistment in the army? And, uh, you know, they told me, hey, you know, no, no problem. You can do that if you want. I said, okay, that'd be cool. And so I did. I, I switched over, and the, the, the commander signed off of it on my Marine Corps unit, and the Army welcomed me in. They, they were glad to get get a, a Marine in, in the unit. And uh, the, the problem was is that I, they lied to me because then they came after me for my college money saying that I did not fulfill the terms of my enlistment in the Marine Corps. Now, they told me up and down that there was no problem with me switching, and I did ask that specific question if that was going to interfere with my college 
uh, grants and uh, and they said no and of course did I get that in writing no because you're young and you're stupid you know and uh, so when when a push came to shove I, I ended up paying back a lot of that money to the government so yeah I paid for my education I guess that these uh, woke uh, people now they they're not gonna have to pay for their education which is in my opinion wrong you know if you went out and accrued forty thousand a hundred thousand dollars in debt and somebody else has been working in a skilled trade as an electrician or a plumber I don't think that it's right that they get their education paid for and the plumber and the electrician uh, had to pay for theirs so anyway that's just my opinion on that so getting back to the army I mean there's a few stories in there and I will tell you this there's nothing more fun than riding in those helicopters because uh, you get up there and you strap you in and we would just we would just slide that door open and of course all you got is a, a seat belt it's just like being on a, um, a roller coaster ride or anything in that helicopter you know it's going this way and it's going this way and it's going that way and it's going that way you know because you're flying treetop level to simulate that you're coming in on a, uh, a drop zone and uh, and so that the funnest part was okay you know you you got all your rappel gear on and uh, this was a bit different you know I had never you know it takes a, it's a real art to rappel out of a helicopter because you get out on the skid okay and the helicopters hovering there and you have to leave enough slack in that rope to get below the skid otherwise you're gonna hit your head right on the skid when the rope snaps tight and so you drop you free fall about you know 15 feet or so before that rope yanks on you and all you got is rope I mean it's not like you have a harness you know they don't, <laughs> they, don't they don't give you the good stuff in the military so that rope just bites right into you even through the uh, the uniform it bites right into that skin it hurts when you when you snap in like that and then of course you rappel down to the ground but yeah, it wasn't enough to to make it not fun I still enjoyed it. I so that was one of the great things about being in the army the light infantry that I really enjoyed was rappelling out of that helicopter and uh, you know and, and we did, did did mountain warfare training and stuff and uh, so I'm getting kind of into the the story here so one particular time we we were going to go up in the mountains and uh, you know I'm, I'm used to the Marine Corps and I am not going to carry you know the, those old military sleeping bags weighed you know 50 pounds or whatever it was it was ridiculous and uh, so I said you know it's, it's warm it was in the 80s 90s well I didn't really think about the fact that in the mountains it's <laughs> it goes down into the 20s and 30s at night and so I just left my sleeping bag behind I said you know I'm not going to need that damn thing I just brought a shelter half and a poncho and uh, you know packed my pack minimally and uh, we got up there in those mountains and uh, you know I was I, I had the advantage on everybody hiking because you know you hike miles and miles you know force march and uh <laughs> but when we when we bid down that night all I had was and it got cold oh my goodness if you can imagine somebody just shaking and I mean shaking all night long it was the longest night other than that day in the desert and I just I just was like you stupid idiot you know I, I, I did I want to hike that sleeping bag no should I have yes and I'm uh, glad I didn't get hypothermia or even hell even frostbite I mean I've but when you're that cold all night long and what are you gonna do beg somebody hey man can I uh, you know get in your sleeping bag with you or you know does anybody have an extra sleeping bag no nobody's <laughs> you're not even gonna say anything I mean you've, you'd be just incredibly stupid to admit that you were an ignoramus and uh, didn't bring the necessary gear so that's my uh, my army light infantry story uh, there's probably more I'll try to come up with them you know the other thing that was was cool I'll just throw this out there real quick was uh, we did build those uh, rope bridges you know we would you send a guy across uh, like a, a river or a creek or whatever and uh, you, you, we'd make those rope bridges and then you you just kind of shimmy across that rope going across the river you know we didn't do any of that stuff in the Marine Corps and uh, so that was cool I mean I the, the Army Light Infantry I mean those guys they get out and they, they and a lot of them what was surprising was how many of them were old timers you know a lot of them guys you know they, they're missing teeth and uh they've been in the army reserve for for you know 20 25 years and and you know but they had the knowledge man i'll tell you what those are the guys you want to hang around because they knew everything and uh it's just they loved it you know so they just they just stayed in 
until the army was going to tell them they had to leave. You know, they were well past. Uh, you can retire at 20 years. You know, some of them guys have been 25, 30 years in, and uh, but uh, it was it was cool. And man, they were buff too. I mean, you know, here I am, a young man, and we go up in those mountains, and those old guys, you know, they they put you in the dust. They, Come on, you, you young whippersnapper, get you get your legs going. You know, we're getting tired of waiting on your 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 sorry butt, you know. And of course, I was a college student, so it's not like I was out, you know, uh, hiking trails and doing what I do now to get, stay in shape. So, all right, well, we're coming to the end of the day. That's the last story of the day. Don't know when I'll get these up, but uh, it was uh, it was a great day. Glad you guys uh, could come out with me. If anybody ever watches this video. And uh, I know I will, and bye-bye.